You're here because you're working on a vehicle where the engine cranks normally but will not start. Begin by connecting a scan tool. Look at scan data first. Address any transmission or engine codes. Make sure you do that first. Then pull up a spec sheet and start comparing your scan data to vehicle specific information. Check the MAP sensor. If the MAP is wrong, it can cause a no start. Now if the MAP reads zero, the PCM will probably default and start off the MAP. So when we say wrong, we're talking about extremely low or extremely high hertz causing a no start. Then check the MAP sensor. MAP sensor would have to be very, very low in order to cause a no start. So that's what you're looking for. Throttle position. On the other hand, throttle position would have to be over 3.8 volts to cause a no start. It would be causing a clear flood situation. Then check the ECT. Now, you would have to have a ECT that is showing you a very warm engine, a hot engine, to cause a no start. So you're actually looking for an ECT that's higher than normal. Then check the EGR sensor. If the EGR position is incorrect, stop and go to EGR testing at this point. Correct any problem on this page before going on. A very important note, theft detection must not be activated. A communication problem will cause a no start condition. Make sure the customer has the right key. Look in scan data and make sure theft detection is not activated. If the scan tool won't communicate, go to mill and scan tool problems. Test that you have to do for a crank but no start. You're going to have to check for fuel and spark, a fuel injector signal, and engine mechanical. Be sure that you measure fuel pressure and compare it to specifications. Just because there is some fuel pressure doesn't indicate that this engine will start. In this example, there is a no start at 50 PSI. If the fuel pressure is incorrect, go to fuel delivery testing. If fuel pressure is normal, next check for spark. It must be fat, blue, white spark. A spark tester will tell you if there's spark at the plug wire, but it does not tell us if the spark is reaching the plug. This shows us a no spark on all cylinders. If there's a no spark condition on all cylinders, you want to go to ignition control testing. In this example, the spark gap tester had to be closed down to get a spark. This weak spark will not start the engine. The spark plug will have to fire normally under the cylinder's normal compression. This spark is too weak to fire under compression. Go to ignition primary test. This isn't fat blue white spark either. This weak spark may cause a no start in the engine. Go to ignition primary test. This weak spark, along with dirty injectors, worn spark plugs, engine vacuum that isn't up to snuff, or any other problem can cause a no start. Weak spark and other poor conditions will cause your no start. You'll have to take care of most of the conditions to get this engine to start. If the spark is normal on all cylinders, then check for a fuel injector signal. You can use a NOID light and it will tell you if there is a fuel injector signal. If there is no signal, go to ignition fuel control testing. Injector voltage and current waveforms are more accurate than a NOID light. You can use a low current amp probe on either side of the circuit and as you crank the engine, you should get your injector pulse. If there is no injector waveform, go to ignition fuel control testing. If you don't have a low current probe or just because you want to, use a voltage probe on the injector's control circuit. If there is no injector waveform, go to ignition fuel control testing. If spark, fuel injection signal, and fuel pressure are normal, go to cranking compression or valve timing test. 